so uh, what's your name and where are you from, man? And my name is Joe. I'm from uh, San Fernando Valley, California, uh, Los Angeles County, Southern California. Okay. Uh, and you say you've done some uh, prison bids or you did, did 13 years straight um, in some pretty notorious prisons, man. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about where you've been and what led you to go into the penitentiary. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I did 13 years straight. My original sentence was nine years with 80%. Um, and then uh, I started out level three, which uh, was in Ironwood. It's uh, far southern California by the Arizona border. And I was there for about six months before I caught an in-house case and uh, ended up getting shot right up to level four and uh, went to Pelican Bay Shoe, not only for the in-house case, but for uh, they uh, – perceived me as a possible active member in a prison gang. Yeah. And uh, uh, I did three years in the shoe up there in Pelican Bay. And then uh, I finished my sentence in a couple other prisons after that. Well, yeah, you know, actually, you know, a lot of people know, or suppose, you know, from what I know, uh, Pelican Bay, hold, the shoe holds some pretty powerful individuals. When it Most definitely. To, when it comes to old gangland activity. Yeah, most definitely. I was up there with uh, some hard hitters, uh, you know, lots of brand members, lots of Nazi lowriders, um, you know, of course, Mexican Mafia, BGF. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty crazy, uh, crazy prison, man. Uh, all your movement, you know, uh, the pods are eight cell pods and there's six pods per gun tower. So there's one gun tower that watches over six pods. So there's eight cells in a pod. There's a shower on each on each. So there's four cells on each tier and there's a shower on each tier at the end. And then there's a little door at the end of the, the, the pod that opens up into the concrete yard. Yeah. So they'll open the cell door to let you go to the shower, to go to the yard. But anytime you leave the cell to leave the pod, you're shackled. Yeah. And when you're walking through the corridors, there's always a gunner above you with a mini 14 walking on the catwalk and, yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty intense. It's intense. Yeah, I seen a uh, I actually seen a documentary, man, of that place of the shoe in particular, and it it's pretty crazy how it's designed. It's all indoors. And yeah, they have like a watchtower right in the center indoors, and they have like windows where they can see down with yep. bars. Then thing, it, it's pretty intense, man. That's the first time I've ever seen a setup like that, and they lead to like hallways to each block, and uh, yep. Hey man, them COs say they're trained to kill. Oh yeah, it's 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 <laughs> notorious, man. It's like you know, and you never know who's going to be in your pod, like you know, because the I mean, sometimes you can you got action with one of the guards, you can get somebody that you know moved over into your pod, you know, like one of your partners, your comrades, or whatever. But uh, for the most part, you know, they're moving whoever they want into those pods. So sometimes you'll be in there and it might be you and your celly and then like one other white cell and then there'll be some southern Mexicans and then northern Mexicans, maybe some blacks. And uh, the northern Hispanics are notorious for doo-doo bombing you. So th it's crazy, dude. So they'll come out for their showers and people have been there know what I'm talking about, man. So the, the front of your cell is all perforated. It's all holes. It's perforated. Yeah. So, um, and your bunks are in the back and then you have your little, your toilet, your sink, and then there's a little stand for your TV and then your little desk. And, uh, you, when you know that they're running showers, you got to literally take your sheets up and tie it up to your, the front of your cell yeah. because the northerners will come by with, with, you know, feces and cups and gas you. Through the, and the through seals the, let them walk out with cups and stuff like that. They ain't doing nothing. I mean, what are they gonna do? Yeah, I thought I thought maybe they might be doing some kind of strip search or anything every time they left the cell. Nah, when they when they when they let you out to go to the shower to go to the yard, they just pop that one cell out because there's no way for oh, you to okay. leave the pod. Okay. okay. But when you're leaving the pod, then they'll come to your cell and hook you up with yeah. shackles and everything. Now, before we get into describing the excellent yard that y'all might get to work out in or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Describe a little bit about the size and you know about the cell. Is it like really tiny? I mean, can you put both hands up, touch both walls? Is it like that? You know? Actually, actually, the cells in the in in the shoe in, in Pelican Bay are actually pretty big oh. um, compared to regular cells. Um, I'd say it's probably like ten feet wide, like nine feet deep. 
um it's pretty big it's it's pretty big it's it's bigger than just your average cell um and the way it's set up like i said it's all concrete everything's concrete so your bunks are in the back you got your top and bottom and then below the bottom there's like two little little cubby holes concrete cubby holes for your stuff yeah and then um the toilets in the right and then your your little stand with your tv you can put your tv and then it has a hole in the in the in the wall where you run your wires through the cops plug it in through the pipe chase yes yeah, yeah what, you don't have access to the outlet you know what i mean what kind of channels they let y'all get in there man was it uh the basic thing or was it yeah basic minimal? basic basic local channels the, the channels weren't that great and uh because it's in crescent city so there's not a whole lot going on up there with crescent city yeah and then um they, you know they play the institutional movies and stuff like that you know oh that's so, hard i didn't know they did that all the way over there actually that's one thing i didn't know or even care to ask about institutional movies i remember when i was in uh this one prison man they played in every prison every weekend they would have some movies playing uh but i remember the christians had an uproar about rated r movies so they stopped playing rated r movies man yeah people were going buck wild man yeah it's the same in california they only pay, play pg-13 and pg stuff uh they don't play rated r or anything crazy yeah. um but usually all institutions will have like two movies a week and they'll change them like on a sun saturday or a sunday yeah, or whatever intervals or something okay. yeah and then like like you know like you it'll each movie will play like twice a day once in the morning once in the afternoon yeah well yeah that's usually how it works but that was a crazy institution, man. And for being there for three years, you know, there comes a point in life, you know, death, so you as you know, when three years straight in there in the shoe. Yeah. Dang. And, and I fought my validation. Um, they were trying to validate me. I'm not going to name what, what prison gang and yeah. whatnot, but they were trying to validate me. They had some points against me. Um, in California, they have to have a certain amount of points to validate you as a prison gang member. And they had some points against me. Um, and, uh, I fought it. I actually uh, filed a class, uh, uh, 1983 uh, civil suit against them. Yeah, I heard that and, before. And, yeah, and, and beat it. So I, I went through the whole institutional process, the 602 appeal process, and then uh, filed a 1983 federal federal appeal Let against them. This. One. Was that form hard to get for y'all in there? I know it was hard for people to get it over here, man. Nah, nah. You, you go to you go to the law library and they put you in the cages and yeah, you can pretty much have, you have access to pretty much everything. That's one thing about the law libraries in California. You have a lot of access to what you need. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think I've ever visited a law library. I visited library, but I never went to any law library. I probably should have if they had it. Uh, yeah, it's. I spent a lot of time in the law library, man. In the hole, man. How was going to the hole? I mean, uh, the yard. <laughs> oh man well that's that's the only time you really get to see any kind of like sunlight because there's a little bit of sunlight yeah. uh, above but uh i mean they give you a handball um you know you can you can sit there and play handball you know you can work out you know uh i never missed yard though i always went to my yard time yeah i would i would too and you, you know, go in there by yourself out. too right yeah, you can go in there by yourself. Sometimes your cell, you might stay in. You'll go out, or you know, vice versa, or you'll both go out, or whatever. Usually, you take turns. That way, your cell, you can get a little bit of cell time. You know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the fish game, man? I bet there's a lot of fishing going on in there. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I've done a lot of whole time too, just in general, uh, away from Pelican Bay shoe. And uh, yeah, there's always fishing, man. You're, you're. That's that's your main you know source of communication in there and getting things back and forth yeah. you know i got one crazy story man uh pretty sad man actually you know and it just shows how treacherous some people can be in there um this one person man kind of high up high ranking you know gang member got some uh some uh some poison sent to him in the mail damn and uh What's that stuff? It's like uh, if you put it in water, it's like silver color. If you oh, no. put it in water, it like um, it'll come to me anyways. So he gets his poison in the mail and he wants to try it out. So there's a guy in there, another white guy, who's going home in like two weeks, man. Dang, and dude injects man. the poison into a, a Snickers bar and sends it over to him. Dude eats it. Next thing you know about it, an hour later, he's done. Just to try it out. That's, that's so that's the type of that's the, 
that's the type of individuals you're dealing with. You know what I mean? I mean, that alone. You ain't even got to tell no more stories. But hearing a story like that, that alone would t- should let the viewers know, you know, you're dealing with maniacs. And they're, you know, not everyone, but right. there are some true animals, man, that just don't have no, no kind of remorse, no kind of care in the world for the next man. And, uh, you know, that's what makes prison so violent, man. To me, yeah. it's so dangerous because there's so many individuals that just don't give a shit, you know. Uh, and and in California, especially, man, you know, it's like I, I, I watch all your videos, you know, and, and uh, like I hear about the Florida. I've watched all the Florida videos and even watched the other uh, the white blood. He's got his own little channel going on now. And I've, I was, I've been watching his videos and, you know, it's a whole different world in Southern California. It is, and, man. Uh, I mean, I, you know, when you're on the main line, you know, especially, like I said, I did most of my time at level four institutions and you could be sitting on your bunk after breakfast playing pinochle with your celly and the white Mac rep for your building can come to your door and knock on the door and be like, hey, uh, mandatory yard this morning, boot up, grab your stuff. Yeah. And you got to go out there. And when you go out there, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're getting into war. a riot. Yeah. It's this war, you know, and, and you might not even know why, you know, but you have to, you know what I mean? And the next thing you know, you're sitting there with a knife and you got guys coming at you with knives and, you know, there's live rounds being shot into the ground next to you. I mean, it's, it's insane, man, you know, and, uh, it's, it's, uh, the politics out there, it's, it's, it's way different out here. It's, it's been other, than other States. I've noticed that. Yeah. And, uh, it definitely it's, it's, is, man. And that's why I'm yeah, so fascinated intense. by it. Yeah, it's it's a trip, man. It's like, uh, you know, I hear a lot about, you know, um, you know, raping and stuff going on. And like you might every once in a great while get like some sick dude that might rape the celly. But that 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 person gets dealt with by his race. Um, as far as the whites and Hispanics go, that's like a no, no. Like if you, you, if you rape your celly or you rape anybody in there, you're, you're getting you're getting killed. Yeah. You know, you're, or you're, they're going to try and kill you. Uh, you know, the, the we. You know, it's the whites and Hispanics, we look down upon any type of sexual offense, you know, any type of child molestation, rape, anything like that, man. We don't we don't tolerate it. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a universal thing. It's wherever I've been, at least people don't stand for that either. But uh, let me ask you this, man. What the hell do you think you would be thinking if you left prison and uh, had to come over here to an East Coast prison? And see everybody, whites, blacks, Hispanics, all eating together and talking together and all of that. How would you feel about that, man? <laughs> man, brother. Well, you know, when I first went in, you know, when I first went in, you know, my mind was in a pretty, you know, it was in a dark place. And, and I, I, I was, you know, trained in a certain way of thinking. Um, you know, now, of course, since I've matured and grown up, you know, a lot's changed in that, that, that area. But, uh, and I don't know, brother. I, honestly, I can't really tell you. Uh, it would it'd definitely be a trip, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know I would be uh, on guard, ready to go. I mean, you know. Yeah. For sure. Off, off the, off the jump, you know. Yeah, for sure. That's a fact. And I try to put myself in the shoes where I'm. If I would have had to go to Cali, you know, and and you know, it always makes me wonder. Cause look, man. You know, I don't have no problem with anybody who does the gang stuff. I say that all the time, man. You do you. If you want to do it, 100% do it. That, that's you. It's the route you took. And I could have taken that route, and I always decided not to. You know, I've always liked to be lonesome, you know what I mean, by myself and handle, you know, have fun and mingle with people, but I don't want to be conducted by anyone else. And uh, is there anybody – I hate to put it into perspective by a movie. But a lot of people, a lot of viewers have actually seen this movie that I'm going to be discussing with you right quick. It's called Felon. Have you ever heard, seen that movie? Yeah. With Val Kilmer? Yeah, okay. yeah it's, a, it, it's a good movie. It is a good movie. And even if it's a little over the top sometimes, it's still a really good movie. But um, would you say there's a lot of people like that Val Kilmer individual that kind of has respect from all angles but is not connected with anybody? Yeah, you do see a lot. You you see you see people that that kind of do their own thing, and uh, those dudes are just considered woods. You know what I mean? And they're just they they kind of. But now, if something's going down, 
they they're gotta, expected. They, they gotta they get got, up. They got to ride. There ain't no, hey, I'm going to sit this one out, fellas. Because uh, as soon as you get off lockdown, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, the, the first time I saw somebody get murdered in prison, this is this is why, and this is and whites and southern politics are very similar. So I can I can kind of correlate this this situation with the with the with with the white race. He was a Hispanic southern Hispanic guy. He was sixty years old. They were at war with the blacks at the time. I won't say where or anything like that, but they were at the war war with the blacks at the time, and uh, they kept getting go you know getting off on each other, going on lockdown, and then what the uh, the last time they got off with each other, there was a 60 year old man who walked with a cane. He didn't do nothing. He laid down. So the next time they let him off lockdown, the Hispanics and the blacks went ahead and called a truce. Word went around to the white guys. Hey, the Hispanics, the Southern Hispanics will be doing one of their own today on the yard. Just, you know, keep your eyes open. The 60 year old, the 60 year old. Yeah. So, um, I was literally 10 feet away from this man when the person that did it, he got up behind him with the ice pick. And I mean, about, I'd say about 25 hits in the back of the neck. And what happened is he severed his brain stem. Dang. And, and he was on life support, obviously, and severed brain stem. He ain't ever coming back. And they, uh, you know, his family decided to take him off life support. But that, that was the first time I witnessed with my own eyes somebody getting murdered in prison. And it was over a 60-year-old man who walked with a cane, who yeah, sat down right. during a riot. So that lets you know, I mean, just the average Joe who's kind of, yeah, doing his own program, got some respect from everybody. When that time comes to ride, you're going to ride, or the next time you get off lockdown, that person's going to be the one getting dealt with. And that's just how it is, man. It's cold. It's cold blood. In other, in other states, you know, one of the downfalls is like, you know, if the, the the minority in that institution is whites or Hispanics, they kind of get preyed upon. Well, in California, it's a hands-off policy. So, like, if you're black, you can't just go up and pop a white guy or move on a white guy without it going through the chains of commands because it's just going to kick off a riot. Yeah. You know, vice versa. Like, a white dude can't just go up to a black guy and take flight, you know, just because he, he you know. Now, if the guy comes up and is just totally out, flat right disrespectful and you know calls him a punk or something and obviously yeah you have to but just because you maybe had a bad dealing with the guy and you know you're not on a good page you can't just go up and deal with that situation without going through the proper chain of command yeah That's so wild. so That's in cool. a sense yeah it does have its perks because you know you got you got a group of people that that have your back but you know as time went on, I started to see things with a different set of eyes. And, you know, I started to educate myself. I got my GED, uh, started taking college courses in California. They can, you can take college courses. Was and this, uh, by the time you're about to go home, you knew you had to kind of change the mind frame out. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was probably about three years prior to me going home that I started really just uh, focusing and I got a paralegal uh, degree and uh, Damn. I just I st started washing my hands of everything man because uh, you know it was just uh, you know it was like what what cause were we fighting for you know I mean seriously you know what cause are you fighting for you know what I mean and and you, you see you see the treachery you know what I mean and um, I mean you don't what I, you don't what do you not see though you don't see any kind of future out of this shit Nah, there's no future. There's no true. There's no true camaraderie. There's no true brotherhood. There's no, you know, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all a, a facade. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's. It's a facade. Anybody has the ability to 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 inflict bodily injury upon somebody. Man, it doesn't take much to do that. Um, and that doesn't make you a man. You know what I mean? That doesn't make you uh, a good person. And uh, you know, I just started to realize all these things and um, decided, you know, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in a box. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, for sure. So, you know, I mean, I've got stories for days, brother, of you know, murders and, you know, them going in after they get the guys out of the cell and them finding the guy wrapped up in the sheet with his teeth all over the cell. And, you know, 
words written on the walls and the guy's blood. And I mean, there's just, you know, there's, there's, I mean, there's so many things that I've witnessed over the years. I mean, right before I came home, one of my good friends, uh, I won't say his name, but uh, he hung himself after a visit. And through the crack of my door, I could actually see his cell. And my cell, he woke me up and he's like, hey, so-and-so hung himself. And I'm like, what? And I got off my bunk and I looked. And I literally could see my partner hanging from the vent, you know. And then when they wheeled him out on the gurney, they didn't even cover him up. So they wheeled him right by my cell to take him out the side exit. And I mean, I, to this day, I see his eyes, you know, his black, you know, black, just black sockets, you know, and his face just, you know, and it's something... The things that I've witnessed and see, you know, and, and, and seen over the years. Kira, come here. Come here. Come here. Sorry. Kira, come here. Come here. Come on. Um, the things that I've seen and, and witnessed, you know, for, gosh, the first four years, man, I had nightmares. I mean, I, I've hit my wife in the face in, in my sleep, you know, swinging from nightmares and stuff. Well, at you least know? you were sleeping, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> right. But uh, you know, I <laughs> man, no, no, that's yeah, she'd hit me back if I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. Um <laughs> But you know, I, I'm married now, man. I, I came home on a Saturday and on that Monday I started working, man. And I've that's I haven't amazing. stopped grinding. I haven't stopped grinding since, bro. I came home July thirtieth of two thousand and ten and uh I haven't You've stopped grinding while, since man. You've been a while. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Excellent, yeah. man. I love to hear that, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I got, I had a three year parole tail, high power, high control parole. And uh, I ended up getting off in two years because I did so good. That's and my parole up, officer, man. my parole officer liked me so much and respected me so much. And uh, he knew what I came from and what I had done. You know, I mean, they see your file. They know, you know, they know what goes on in that shit, man. Yeah, they they know what time it is. They know what you've done and where you've been and what you've seen and and you know and he was impressed with the fact that I got out and I made change and I didn't go back. And uh yeah, he let me off after 2 years, discharged me. And uh Yeah, it's a good feeling, man. It's a good feeling to be away from all that. That was one of the best damn feelings of your life, wasn't it? Oh yeah, man. Discharging that number. Oh my god. I can god. still remember it. P05613. <laughs> Me too, man. Look, I'll never forget the damn day they released me from probation papers, man. It was, I swear, I, I can't even begin to put into words, but it felt like I was reborn. I was actually a free man. I, fe I seriously definitely. felt like I was in some kind of bondage and chains, man. Uh, yep. That's no way to live life, even if you're out here in the streets. I mean, it's better than prison, but I mean, shit, you got to ask to just leave a damn state. You know, uh, it was pathetic. And that's that's a horrible way no. to live. But uh No, it is, man. Congratulations, man. You've been out longer than me. <laughs> yeah, I've been out for a minute, man. I've been out for a minute, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good feeling, man. Uh you know, it's me and my wife. We you know, we have our kids, are they're 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 all older now. Um my wife's son, my stepson's eighteen, and then I have a twenty three year old that was uh conceived when I was fifteen. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, and he's he's kind of going down his own little path right now and doing his thing, you know, and he's going to have to learn the hard way, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, Sometimes you know, I it's, do, man, you know, it's sad yeah. to say, but you know, and that's the number one thing parents need to get through their mind. You know, they're going to do what they do, you know, regardless. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is. But, uh, before we go, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. If there's any good piece of advice you'd like to tell to the youth about, anything man uh what would that be yeah i'm, I'm just gonna put it like this man and, and this might be a little long-winded but uh you know i i i grew up uh in a in a in a pretty bad environment you know my mom left when i was two because she was a dope fiend my dad left uh i was raised by my grandmother god bless her heart she just passed away in august of last year oh, I'm sorry to hear um thank you brother and um you know, I ran away from home at the age of 12 and started my, my journey down the juvenile system. And, uh, you know, and then at 18, you know, I went in 18 years. And, you know, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know, the gang banging, the drugs, you know, the fast money, the, you know, the quick women. It ain't worth it, man. 
you know, it ain't worth it. What's, what's worth it is, you know, making that honest money, working hard, grinding, doing what you need to do, you know, meeting that good one and it's going to take care of you and it's going to love you and have your back. And, uh, you know, if you do find yourself in prison, man, just, uh, you know, I, I steer you away from it. And, you know, and I, I pray that whoever's watching this that may be having these, these issues in life know that you can change and you just got to want to do it from within. But if you do end up in that situation, man, just know you're going to a, to a volatile place and uh, be prepared. Be prepared. That's crazy, man. Well, look, I appreciate you coming on to the show, man. If you feel the need to want to come back on, uh, you're more than happy, man. I got a feeling my viewers will want to have you come back on and tell a few more stories probably, man. You're a real one. I salute to you, my friend. And, uh, man, I wish nothing but success to you, man. You know? Likewise, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. That was, uh, that was awesome, man. And, uh, yeah, anytime you want me to come on, man, just let me know. I have nobody. I have a ton of stories, man. If anybody wants to hear him, just let me know. All right. Hey, and, and, hold on now. All right. I, think I just remember you. Were you the one to say you got a YouTube channel too? Yeah, I, I want to start a YouTube channel. Up. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's right. It's uh, uh um, it the the YouTube channel is free from Fetters Growth, um, and I named it that because uh, of course, when you're behind the walls, you you're chained by Fetters. Yeah. So free from Fetters Grove is my YouTube channel, and gonna, then uh, your your sound went down again, but it's all good. I'm just gonna leave your channel linked in the comment section below. It's called uh, Fetters. What released from Fetters Grove? Free from Fetters Grove. Free from Fetters Grove, and I'm gonna leave that uh, pinned in the comment section in the description if y'all want to go subscribe and uh, support what he might be doing here in the future. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, man, and I I appreciate you coming on once again. And uh, to the old lady, I said what's up, and I hope y'all nah. have a good uh, future, man. Hey, likewise, likewise, death, likewise. All right, buddy, take it easy now. You too, man.